before I start, I want to ask you a question. What do you see in front of you? A tall woman, huh? <laughs> Middle-aged? Mm, a little bit. Um, Olive-skinned? Maybe. There's a saying that says, never judge a book by its cover. Beneath this tall, middle-aged, olive-skinned, they tell me sometimes maybe a little bit loud, yeah, is actually someone who has done a lot with their lives, but also maybe been discriminated against, been intimidated. Can you believe that? And also dealt with many challenges. Today, I'm going to tell you my story. My story is one that has shaped my life, shaped my way of thinking. Um, I hope that from today, you learn something more about me. And I hope you learn a little bit more about the challenge I have as a woman. Imagine... Imagine for a second that I'm walking along a corridor and next to me is a senior police officer. And this senior police officer commands lots and lots of police officers and a rather big police budget. And we're walking and what are we talking about? Are we talking about policy? Are we talking about the performance of the police service? Are we talking about the very important meeting we're going to and what we maybe need to discuss with those politicians? No, we're not. This police officer, this senior police officer, turns to me and says, Christina, do you have to wear heels? <laughs> so I look at him and I think, oh, God, do I say anything? Do I not say anything? Do I blush? Do I laugh? Actually, inside, I'm fuming. Who is he to judge me by what I look, by the shoes that I'm wearing? So, I turn and I say, only a small man would comment on the size of my shoes. <laughs> now, the, the problem is, yeah, you will ask, did that improve our working relationship? <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, did he ever make personal comments again? Not ever. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take you into another room, okay? This room is a training room, okay? And in the training room, there's me to begin with. Um, and the training room is set up for police officers, only they're all men, okay? So I'm the only woman in the room. Three police officers arrive first, and they come into the room and say, um, can I ask where the toilets are, and could you make us a coffee? <laughs> okay. I was about to introduce myself as the director, okay, and they want me to make coffee. Okay. Now, did I make coffee? No. Did I show them where they could make it themselves? For sure, yeah. So... We go back into the training, guys. There, imagine they're all now sat, yeah, waiting for me to start the, the training, okay? The training is about diversity. There's a subject, okay? Twelve men talking about diversity. <laughs> okay, so this one man puts his hand up, and he says, um, I want to say something. I want to say that actually... If I was ill, I would never go and see a woman doctor because all they are good for is uh, having babies and cooking. <laughs> so I step back, I breathe, <laughs> and I think, okay, I've had babies and my cooking isn't that bad, but actually I'm worth a little bit more than that, okay? So I say to him, okay, let's reverse this a little bit. You are lying on the floor, dying. <laughs> and a woman doctor comes up to you. You are telling me you're going to refuse treatment? I think not. Okay. Now, another room. Okay. Another room 
imagine the scene, very senior officers, and there, and there is me in amongst them. They're talking about two men who have been stopped in their cars 32 times by the police in six months. 32 times in six months. Now, this must be height of crime. They must have done something really bad. Yeah? They must be wanted somewhere. So we look into it a bit more. Well, actually, is it that they are criminal? Is it that they were just bored, the police, and decided that actually, yeah, they would just pick on these two particular people? Or actually, is it because they were both black, they were both brothers, they were both 25, and drove matching red Porsches? My job was to challenge that perception. There's nothing wrong in challenging the perception. Making people think different. That's what I thought. Okay. Imagine one last room. Okay. I'm going to take you there. Where these police officers, senior officers, are talking about how we can consult with prostitutes about policing. And we talk around complaints and prostitution. The next evening... I go to a meeting of prostitutes and they tell me that the very people that are there to protect them, the police, have been using their services in the back of a police van. Now, what do I do? Do I say something? What is my role? Well, guys, my role, I thought, was actually... I need to challenge that. I need to make sure that that isn't taken advantage of. So, I reported it. I stood above. I overcame all sorts of difficulties. And those people were punished. Now, I'm not here to defend prostitution. But, yeah, the police are not always right. Maybe when I first started my job a long, long time ago, I was a little bit in awe of the police. They do a great job. 100%. They do a great job. But they are not always right. Yeah? Now, what have I learned by all the challenges I have had as a woman? I've learned that actually being judged by what you see tall, middle-aged, loud, irritating probably by now, um, person, yeah, is not what I want to be judged on. I want to be judged on the contribution I have to make. Now, when I was younger and I went to school, I was bullied as a child. And that's difficult to believe. <laughs> but, but I was bullied as a child and do you know why? Because I was the tallest child in the room, okay? I was this tall, excluding the heels, this tall when I was 11 years old, okay? And they bullied me. Now, today, I'm proud of the person that I've become. I'm proud because actually, yeah, people listen to the contribution I, I have to make. And I'm so proud that actually, not only am I tall, I wear heels to prove it. <laughs> so, so, for me, the important thing is face up to those challenges. Face up to those things that you don't think are quite right. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be a confident person. Life experience has made me a confident person. And it can make us all that way. Thank you very much.